Why do some guys have so much trouble dating after college when they finally get to the real world? Dude, when I was in like Sigma Psi Zeta, bro, it was so easy to get chicks. But like now that I'm graduated, it's way harder. Yeah, bro. Sigma Psi for life. Uh, we got to talk about it, Andrew. This There was this post on Reddit saying, how come there was all these guys in college that were supposed chads, but it got revealed that they were relying on the structure provided by the frat. Mm. So this guy was saying, this is a post by an Indian guy, by the way, on an Asian male Reddit, saying that he, after college, traveled to Europe with a friend who was on the college baseball team who was white. And he said when they were traveling around Europe, Southeast Asia, his friend didn't know how to talk to anybody because he was so used to the inherent high status that the frat gave him and then being a college baseball player gave him, but he was out meeting people at bars. He was dealing with rejection. So he was just like, dude, I was way more equipped to deal with like adult life than my friends that were trying to recreate college life. Right. So this guy's saying that despite him being of Indian descent, he was more trained to hunt on his own and gather on his own rather than his friend who was always buoyed by the system in college. Now we've seen this many, many times before. If you guys have ever been in college and knew any sort of fraternity people or people in a tight knit social system, it doesn't have to be a white fraternity or a black fraternity. It could have been an Asian fraternity or anyway. Or be like a Asian gang or something like that. Sure, like some yeah. girls, ABGs, they that's where the word comes from, right? Like basically he said in high school and college, social social circle game is the only game. You can't go to Arizona State and expect to get with a hot blonde sorority girl if you're an outsider. It's literally just not happening. Right. Well, right, well, right. first of all, I'll say this. That is true. Right. <laughs> that, that is true from a college perspective. But then he goes on to say that once you get into the big city and everybody graduates, everything is too transient and unstable for social circles to really even develop. So basically, everybody's more just living in the open free market. Right, right, Like right. freelance. Exactly, guys. And we've talked about dating on this channel before, but we're going to delve into this dynamic as two people who were not part of the fraternity system, but did know some frat guys. So anyways, please hit that like button. Check out other episodes of the Hot Pop Boys. Hopefully, this video is helpful. So please hit that like button right Check now. out Smile Out Sauce on Amazon right now. We're going to break it down. I mean, I'll say this. Do you think it is more likely that white people... I, first of all, I, I don't think that his assertion is correct because if this baseball player was a really cool dude who had all this positive confirmation loops, he could have been cool at approaching people too. But it's true that he easily could have used the system as a crutch and not develop those freestyle skills, right? Basically, it's like a system basketball player like a... Duncan Robinson versus a freestyle hooper like Jordan Clarkson. Right, but then there are basketball players who are known to play well in and with outside of the system as well within the system. Steph, Kyrie, KD, Luka. Exactly. They got both. They could play system basketball with the cuts and the pin downs, or they could just ISO you in the wing and pop, pop, pop. Yeah, so uh, all in all, strong players are still strong players no matter the arena, the jungle. You put them in the concrete jungle. You put them in there. there they're going to make something happen, but not everybody is trained that way. So we're going to break it down. David, what are like the three main kind of like viewpoints on this? All right. The three main viewpoints are like, you know, uh, not everybody has access to tight knit social circles. Like cause some people were bringing out and or even in Canada, frats are way less of a thing than in America. Mm. Like Canada is just like some schools don't even have them. Yeah. And especially even on the East Coast of America, frats are a lot more deep cut and well organized than even on the West Coast. And in the South. Yes. Old, old world systems. Well, we I, I think the point is that social systems are really hard to build and they take a lot of buy-in and they're hard to join. And that's why not everybody has one. Not right. everybody has an actual big social system. Right. And it can come in the form of like a lot of Asian Americans. What do they join? Like, I guess what, uh, ethnic orgs or like the ASU or the CASA or the FASA or the VSA Mm -hmm. Right. Um, obviously, there's Asian fraternities as well. I, I guess that's how you build it. But it is true that some of those are more party like the uh, uh, fraternity and a sorority, even the Asian version are way more party centric than the Asian 
cultural org. Yeah. But I also think like social systems are so appealing for that reason. And that's why a lot of people, when they join them, they will take a less ideal social system for the system, even though maybe they don't like all the people in it, or maybe they don't rank super high in it, but people would rather have a system than no system. Even if it's an unideal system, they'd rather be a lower ranked person in a social system than to have zero system. Right, but a lot of people are saying that modern technology with dating apps makes a system less necessary. Yes, and I think that there's the part where if you're a strong player, you can operate well without a system right now, especially with dating apps. Right. Uh, this guy just said, face is the judge and height is the executioner. It's not complicated when it comes to men appealing to women. That's a very interesting statement. I don't know. actually know if it's that simplistic. I'm going to break down my own stack later for my own analysis. And somebody said, there's no right answer for this for both have their strengths and their weaknesses because social games way easier, but then you got to commit all the time to being invested in the social group and be a part of it and like go to the events and things like that. Um, of course, somebody was just talking about, man, social systems look different. It's just in a college, it's a frat, but it could look different depending on what type of life you're living. Mm -hmm. And for some people, it's their company. Like some people, you know, that's why people go to like happy hours and things like that. For other people, I, I noticed that a lot of people used to use professional organizations, but as dating apps have become more popular, I feel like a professional organization is, is less trendy because it's like disintegrating the need for it. Um, somebody said in this next point, in this next comment, that many people's looks quickly disintegrate after college due to weight gain from lack of exercise. Also, many guys start balding. So that is the real reason. Is this true? This guy's pointing out that it has nothing to do with anything. He's just like, yeah, white people, they're just, they, they get fat and their hair falls out quicker. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely some examples of this, but I don't think this is the biggest reason. Um, this guy came through and said, this really plays to Asian guys' advantages because Asian guys were typically studying really hard in college, so they weren't part of a hyper-advanced social system. And number two, that uh, we're just going to look like less, we're going to look younger longer. Right. Do you think that this trend that this Indian guy's pointing out plays in Asian men's favor? Like basically the longer time horizon. Uh, yeah, I think Asian guys are considered late bloomers and they peak later. Right. So while everybody's having fun in college, Asian guys may be having a little bit of fun and then Asian guys more thrive after college. Right. Uh, this guy was like arguing about how different worlds are different because this guy was like, yo, man, I, I don't know if baldness is a deal breaker because I see fat and tall guys in the Middle East all the time with models. And then somebody said, I can't believe you're comparing yourself to guys in those situations in Dubai. Right. Uh, here's the truth, guys. A little bit like what you have to understand as a guy is that once you've hung out with a lot of different types of guys, even like social groups that you really don't like have any real purpose being in, is you'll realize that everybody's circle runs differently. Like if you're an Asian American guy or you're like this type of guy and you're comparing yourself to people in, in Dubai or like United Arab Emirates, UAE or like Albania, they, that's like me saying, how come in Counter-Strike I got to wait for the round to be over to respawn like Call of Duty? Mm -hmm. I'm saying that those are just completely different game maps mm -hmm. or completely different games, period, to be honest, that you just have to understand the dynamics of maybe you're not born into that game. You can't be a part of that game. You can't be a rich Sultan's kid or whatever. Um, this next comment said, I think this is a simple case of the lion was always fed, never learned to hunt. You're just overcomplicating it. Do you think that's true, Andrew? It's just like basically people yeah. fed, fed with a silver spoon in any sort of situation. You, you, it's almost like, if you got this like extra stick, you can use this stick to like run faster or you could just lean on the stick. Yeah, I think what a lot of people are forgetting is also like women outside of college, when they're trying to date outside of college, they're a lot more open to people that they've never met before. I think when you spend four years, like if the girl's in a sorority and the guys are in a fraternity, that's kind of the people you're spending a lot of time with. You're seeing them constantly, seeing them at events, mixers, all those little like grab a dates and all these little events of um, between frats and sororities, Halloween parties that are well organized. So you, so a lot of women get comfortable like dating guys that they know friends of friends. But when they get out into the real world, I do think women are a lot more open to people that they've never met before, people who are not part of their friend group, right? This is and not why, part of these old systems that there were, whether it was Asian frats or yeah. white frats or yeah, any so Latino it, black frats, all this stuff. It basically benefits the guys who know how to hunt. I don't want to only use the word hunt, but like essentially know how to get it on their own or at least uh, know how to operate 
as a, in a small group or as a solo artist, they know how to operate and that really benefits those guys the most because then you're entering a group of women who are a little bit more open to people they've never met before. You're somebody they've never met before. You got some game, you know how to hunt on your own. And then, yeah, boom, dating apps, bang. Jamal Crawford, Lou Williams, six man of the year in the wing. Yeah. ISO, face up, yeah. bink, bink. Um, I'll say this. This is my stack that I think, Andrew, tell me if you agree with me or not. I think that this is what most women aged, let's just say 18 to 24, are looking for in terms of filtration priority. Uh, and uh, this is what I just think. I think it goes, that first they might look subconsciously at race, then they look at face, then they look at height, physique build, status, personality, swag, aura, clothing, whatever you want to say, bucket all that together, money, then they look for goodness, moral stability, and at the bottom, they look for education. Mm. And now, this is, so these are all things that they're looking for, but this is the order of filtration. Okay, so race, face, height, physique, build, status, personality, top five. Yes, yes, yes. But a sorority girl in college might look at like frat, status, face, height, physique, build, personality, swag, money, goodness, education. Do you see what I'm saying? Got so it. that's just what this guy's referring to. He's just saying you've graduated from a system that was hard filtering you on two things that you like. If you're not part of that um, elite like marker, like Cub Scout badge frat that you, you can't even get in on. Yeah. But then yeah. the world changes. But do you agree with me that as women age, potentially not, I mean, not necessarily just age, but like oftentimes there's a positive correlation with aging as women develop a more long-term time horizon for finding a mate, money, goodness, morals, and education move up the stack. Yes. I think stability, goodness, morals, money, in no particular order, but they definitely move up. Right, right, sure. right. They move yeah. up. Yeah. I mean, as with, I think, I think for guys, you know, just to add in my two cents for guys, I think guys, maybe when they're young, they think like face, physique. Or, or physique, face. Come on, let's be honest. Guys. Physique, face. Basically, appearance is number one for young guys, for sure. And I think it still is always there for guys, but it's like not ranked as high. When you're just trying to make more long-term decisions, guys, everybody, guys, when you're trying to make long-term investment decisions, you think differently than when you're day trading. Let's be honest, guys, all right? You see a day trade, you're like, oh, uh, this, yeah. this thing well, is if you were look, Yeah, if you were looking at certain cryptos to hold for like 20 years, you'd, you'd get different cryptos. Yeah, like when you're, when Born Buffett, is investing and looks at different things than the day traders are, okay? But like we said, guys, you got to just know what it is. I mean, ultimately, this is what I think about this post. I think this guy, he brings up some interesting points. Obviously, this Indian, South Asian guy, he was trying to defend Asian men, saying that we're more prepped due to the environment that we got raised in, more gladiator, freestyle gladiator, open market from the jump. And maybe that makes us struggle when we're younger more so than other people due to the lack of social game but uh, social circle game but then when we're older we're more prepared to hoop yeah yeah but like you said uh obviously both is better to be steph is better than being just a hooper or just a system basketball player like jj reddick for sure and i think like dude when people have an arc too i think even when you're young you're like okay i can operate without a system i can operate without a system and then maybe you get old enough and like you know, they say it takes a village to raise a kid. At some point, if you're making super long-term decisions, you got a family, you kind of want some community or system. You start to need it. Yeah. So at different points in your life, you need a social system. I think when you're really young and you're really on your own, just running around, like you can operate without a system. You don't need other people really. But at some point, you get to an age where if you want a family and stability, you need more than just yourself. And so anyways, I, I, I would say that if you're a single guy and you just want to get experiences, hooping, basically taking the ISOs on your own freestyle open market wise is totally cool. But raising a kid, you're going to need to get a system. Yeah. Anyways, guys, let us know what you think in the comments down below. Have, how was your dating in college out after college? What did you realize? Did you learn to hunt or could you always hunt? I don't know if you want to use those words, but anyways, we're just talking about it. Anyways, guys, let us know in the comments down below. And until next time, we out. Peace. Peace.